Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some updates from the Power BI team. We also got a look at what's to come and a couple other items. If you're following us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Ethy Roach has got a blog post looking at the road ahead. Not that road ahead. He's looking at the Power BI roadmap, although it's not actually called the roadmap, it's called the release notes or release plan. It was release notes. If you are familiar with this, this is essentially the semester plan for the Power Platform and Dynamics as well. This gives you a great insight to see what's coming down the road for the products and potential timelines for those items. If you're watching this video, you probably care about Power BI and it's got all of the items for Power BI. And then it's, like I said, it's also got the Power Platform as well and also Dynamics if you wanna go look at that. You can also see the current semester as well as that's not over. They do planning in six month semesters. And so you can go check out all the details on that. I've also got a short link for you if you just wanna get there very quickly. It's HTTPS aka.ms slash PBI roadmap. And that'll take you right to the landing page for the release plans. Then all you have to do is select Power Platform and then go to either the current semester or the upcoming semester. I get in a lot of discussions where folks are asking about the limits of export inside of Power BI, and there are, right? If you export to Excel, it's 150,000 rows. If you export to CSV, it's 30,000 rows. And people always ask, when's that gonna get bigger? And the answer is probably never. Power BI itself isn't meant as a data extraction tool, although I know folks are really comfortable with Excel and they want to work with data in there, whether it be a pivot table or something else. And so what Reza goes through is talks about the benefits of analyzing Excel itself and allows you to go and use Excel against that data set inside of Power BI. If you're not familiar with analyzing Excel, definitely check out this blog post and see what you can actually do to get data into Excel. If you're not familiar with analyzing Excel, Reza has got you covered in this blog post and start using your data from Power BI inside of Excel with all of the rows. One of the updates we got last week was an update to Publish to Web. If you're not familiar with that, Publish to Web allows you to take a report inside of Power BI and put that on a web page, blog post, wherever you want. There is no security on this. This is also one of the features that was available for Power BI free users, so they could still do this Publish to Web activity. However, talking to a lot of enterprise organizations and just other folks that weren't familiar with Publish to Web and what it did, there were asks to limit this because it's a potential for data exposure and confidential data getting out onto the internet. And so it can be a little dangerous. There's a lot of great uses for Publish to Web. If you go look at the Microsoft Financial you can actually go see that and it's a published to web report, but you wanna be really careful with how you use this. So the change is that by default now, you're not gonna be able to actually generate that embed token or that iframe code. You're gonna to have to go to your admins to get that done and then the admins can control more granularly who can actually generate these embed tokens. So if you see that message, don't be worried. That's an actual change that happened in the service last week. I checked it over the weekend and it is hitting the guy in a cube tenant, so it's live. If you wanna check out all the gory details about this, check out the link, it's down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. There was an update for usage metrics for your reports and dashboards. So the old usage metrics report, which has been there for quite a long time, it was great to give you some high level information, but it didn't really let you dig into what's really going on. There's an update to this report. You can enable that right now as of the recording of this video. It's a preview feature, so you optionally can turn it on. But this report goes into a lot more details. You can go see usage for it. You can see what browsers are coming in. You can see how folks are actually viewing it, whether it's the portal, whether it's the mobile app, whether it's something else embedded. And so it will give you a lot more details in reference to the workspace itself. And you'll actually get to see some performance related information as well, which is really cool. So if you haven't checked it out, be sure to turn it on and give it a whirl. 
If you didn't notice, there was no January Power BI desktop release. This has actually been typical over the last couple of years where January, there's not an actual Power BI desktop release, but instead there is a release for Power BI Report Server. And that was no different this last January. Power BI Report Server did get an update for January, 2020. This also includes an update for the Power BI desktop version that goes with Power BI Report Server. So if you're using Power BI Report Server, be sure to update both the server and Power BI desktop to get all the latest features. And this blog post, talks about some of those features that are now available. It is truing up Power BI Desktop, so it's in line with the Power BI Desktop updates that came in December of 2019. And so it gets all the way up to date for you to use and create amazing reports. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.